You ever have those projects where you get started and then you just don't finish it for whatever reason and then you keep thinking, I really I need to finish that. I should get back to that. I really want to finish that. But for various reasons, you, you don't. And then as time goes on, it actually just becomes more and more embarrassing. Whenever you think about it, you're like, oh my God, I'm so ashamed that I haven't finished it. I need to finish this. How have I not finished this thing? And then you inevitably never uh, finish the thing. No, just, just me. But this is one of those. We're, we're gonna talk about that today. Uh, I'm working on a secret shot. Uh, not for me, for Mr. Nathan. This is part of a secret Santa for um, last year. Yeah. I'm like a year late, but we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do it. That's why I'm making this video to hold myself accountable for finishing this blaster. Let's let's talk about the plans, I guess, and then we'll we'll see about making it happen. So for anyone who doesn't know, this is my favorite blaster of all time. It's nostalgia driven. It's a fun blaster. It's something I had as a kid, so I love it. Uh, and when I got Mr. Nathan for our Secret Santa. Um, what what do you what do you get the person that can make literally anything that's so wildly talented that nothing you do could even come close to what they can make? I mean that in its own right was kind of a how could I even live up to this? What am I gonna do? So I spent time trying to think of something and then I decided to go in a more, I guess, sentimental route and just do something fun that had some meaning to me and maybe do a fun paint job and kind of stuff like that. And then it just kind of fell by the wayside. Um, so really we're not gonna do a whole lot to this blaster outside of changing the paint job on it. And we're actually going to mess around with the internal pegs to allow it to take um, regular elite size darts or you know half darts. Because this is an older blaster, both of the dart posts are actually a thicker diameter because older darts had a larger inner diameter in the foam as well. So if you try to use a regular dart on these posts as they are, you will kind of be able to squish the dart in there. But when you try and shoot it, if it doesn't just flop out like 10 feet to the ground, it will actually split the foam on the dart, which, you know, you don't really want to keep ruining darts if you don't have to. So uh, spending a bunch of time sanding these down, I've, I've it's so small and awkward that it, it's it's taking way longer than it should to just do something so simple. So that's going to be some time spent on both of these. Uh, I don't want to like change the spring internals they kind of like uh make it more powerful i will let him do that if he wants to as for paint job and color theme i've gone a few different directions in terms of what i want a, a, another reason that i haven't actually started the paint on this is that i don't know which direction exactly also there's these sticker spots on both sides of the blaster and obviously i i'm not gonna be able to save these stickers unfortunately i don't think unless I do some masterful taping and then hope that pulling the tape off doesn't pull the stickers off that are like 20 plus years old. So probably not. But one of the things I'm wondering is, can I get some custom vinyl decals made to fill these spots? Maybe like Mr. Nathan and his logo on this side or something like that. So that's something else. But why don't we just get into it? I hate sanding. It is the probably worst part of any project, maybe masking, but sanding is just so time consuming and so disheartening because you're just scrubbing and scrubbing and it just, I'm glad I'm done. May not be the best sanding job I've ever done, but it removed most of what I needed removed and hopefully will let things adhere properly and give me a good base to work with. So let's talk colors. I've gone through a few different kind of thought variations on what I want to do for the colors on this blaster. Initially, I wanted to go with like a red, so it kind of looked like one of uh, Mr. Nathan's uh, modded blasters that he had put together that was really cool, that maybe he was going to use in some games. Then I, I couldn't really find the perfect match to, for that red. I want it to match really well. It's like, well, you know, what if I did just like kind of the Fabu colors? It was like, eh, I don't know. I wanted to be something that he would, you know, pair with something and use and, and something like that. So then he posted a video about a talent claw that he had Silver Fox Industries make him that matches the colors of his car. And I was like, 
what if I did that? What if I made, uh, painted this up so that it was not necessarily color matching, but close to that. So he has like a secondary to go with his primary in that style. And I'm just like, okay, I'm on to something. Then a downside turned into a potential good side or opportunity. Regardless, when I was taking the stickers off of the side of this, I was trying to peel them off slowly and carefully thinking maybe I might be able to reapply them and seal them in and keep that kind of old school look to it. But that kind of quickly just, it tattered and ripped and fell apart and well, like my dreams, gone. But from that, I had the thought, why don't I take the Lark logo that's on his Talon Claw that was taken from his car and put that along the side in this sticker spot and then maybe his logo in this sticker spot right here. That could look really cool and could be a really nice touch on this. And now for actual colors, the two main colors I'm going with are from the Vallejo uh, paint line for miniatures, which I've been doing a fair amount of lately, but it just kind of struck me that they have a lot of color options and while these aren't perfect, I think they're a good base and I can work with them and hopefully get things close. So let's get this primed up. I think we're gonna go with a white primer and then we can start painting. And that is where the fun begins because things start to really come together. I just, let's, let's go do it. After putting on the white primer coat, uh, I got to mixing some paints because while the paints I got from Vallejo were good starting points, uh, just for reference, we've got the model color pastel green and the mecha color light green from Vallejo. Uh, they weren't quite perfect. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and hand paint this rather than try to spray paint it because finding a match with spray paint was going to be even harder. Uh, and I have a little bit more control with uh, acrylic paints to mix and blend and kind of try and get that color to match as close as I could from the reference pictures of uh, Mr. Nathan's blaster online. So going ahead and mixing some paints up and, and trying to get a good baseline to start, I went ahead and mixed uh, the two Vallejo colors with each other a little bit, but then mostly actually using some uh, Citadel paints. Uh, Warpstone Glow, I believe I used the most with maybe a little bit of Caliban Green uh, here and there. I can't remember 100% sure for certain and I didn't see it in the footage, but just a reference that when I wanted to darken something up that may have been something that I used. So I just started brushing on the initial layers to get an idea of how close I was once the, the paint was on the blaster itself. And while there was a decent starting point, I did have to continue to kind of uh, fine tune the color on subsequent layers because unlike with spray painting, uh, one layer is, is nowhere near enough. Uh, you need to do multiple, multiple, multiple layers to clean up the brush strokes and have them not be very, you know, clear that you're painting on with a brush. So uh, I lost count of how many layers I did. I want to say it was at least four or five, most likely. It might have been more. Uh, something that you will encounter if you try to do something like this though is if you're mixing your paint, make sure you mix enough of it. Um, I didn't mix enough of it for as many layers as I wanted and that caused some problems later on. I actually found myself chasing the same color trying to get it right to uh, touch up some certain spots. And then when I did the touch ups on those spots, it wasn't quite the right mix. So I had to then go in and match the uh, touch up color and do a whole nother layer in that and try to just get it to look nice and smooth and clean. Uh, and unfortunately it's not perfect. It's not quite uh, as, as nice as I would say is Mr. Nathan's quality, uh, but it got to a point where I could no longer chase those errors without losing just tons and tons and tons of time. So I got to a point where I felt it looks nice. Um, if you look hard and you look in certain spots, then you can find some things. But uh, when you're looking at it, just generally, it does, I think, give a nice look to it. So uh, once I finished that actual painting and, and went ahead and picked out the metallic parts, kind of like, you know, the chrome parts on a car, since this is, again, trying to match Mr. Nathan's car. So I picked up a few recessed or uh, highlighted areas, just kind of give a little bit of that metallic. Uh, and then once I was finished up there, I put an orange rim around the front, just enough to, to be a reminder that, you know, this is a toy 
and then I hit it with a gloss coat to seal some things in and then actually went in with a matte coat afterwards. I think the uh, the logic behind this is something I read in the past that I liked. Uh, if the matte coat starts to fade out and then you see a gloss coat in certain areas where it shouldn't be glossy, you know that the exterior coat is starting to wear off and you can apply more to seal it and protect it again, which I really like the concept of that. Uh, I did, however, go back and uh, hand brush on some uh, gloss varnish onto the parts that were the metallic, so they should shine a bit brighter than the rest of the blaster that has a matte finish on it. And thus we have the Lark Secret Shot. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that Mr. Nathan likes this. There's actually a couple things that um, are not complete and they're going to be shipped to Mr. Nathan. Uh, going to have some vinyl decals like mentioned earlier done with, um, you know, the, hopefully the Lark logo on this side and then Mr. Nathan's logo on this side and he can apply those. I just didn't want to have to wait uh, to get this out to him because it is already past Christmas and past a year late and I just, I don't want it to be more late, you know? Uh, so let's talk about the internals of this blaster because I did have to uh, change a couple things. I didn't change the actual spring load. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. Uh, it's gonna stay a stock spring. That way it's, it's just, it functions. It's not something you have to worry about. Performance is not good. This is an old blaster. I had to sand down the pegs both up front here and in the bottom to try and take uh, elite width darts. Um, and I've had issues. I kept sanding and sanding and sanding and trying to get things thinner and thinner and thinner. And it's gotten to a point where I uh, am concerned about, you know, breaking the dart peg uh, on these blasters since it's so old and the plastic so brittle that I don't want to go too much further. But what's happened is if you put a dart on, uh, depending on the diameter of the inner foam, it can catch on it and the dart can actually split. Like it, it, it's not enough force to push the dart off of the peg, so it splits the foam. And that's obviously not good because you're ruining darts and it's not going anywhere nearly as far as it could. Um, so I was sanding and sanding and sanding and still having that issue. And I thought, okay, well maybe uh, I'm sanding with relatively rough grit. What if the texture of the dart peg is so rough that it's gripping the dart more? So, okay, well let me wet sand this with some finer grit. So I wet sanded it uh, and that did help it, but it didn't completely get rid of the problem. So that is frustrating to say the least. So in defeat, I've essentially accepted that the only real way to use this currently is to go with short darts and only put them on part way. Don't go all the way, don't push it down all the way. That gives it enough to allow it to actually launch the dart. And it's not launching it very far. We're looking at like 20, 30 feet. Um, again, old blaster, not, uh, not a high performer, just looks fantastic. I love this blaster with uh, a fun gimmick that's hard to not enjoy. Uh, that whole, like, you're out of darts? Oh, now it's my turn to tag you. Uh, no, I will get you. That dart was a split dart, so it didn't, didn't shoot well, but uh, it's just a fun blaster and my favorite blaster. And that's why I wanted to do this for Mr. Nathan, because he can make things far better than I can, so I'm not going to make anything functionally fantastic for him, but something that fits with the aesthetic he's going for for some of his blasters now. Uh, that he can maybe use uh, just for fun or, or a wall piece to match with his blasters, hopefully. Um, 
so yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping he enjoys this and it it kind of tickles that that classic car kind of thing that he really enjoys. And despite the stress of trying to figure this project out and, and make something worth a uh, while for Mr. Nathan, I am pleased I got to do this. I'm sorry it took so long to get this to you, Mr. Nathan. Hopefully by the time you see this video, this will already be in your hands. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it and it, it will look nice and match relatively well with your other primary blasters. I'd actually thought about trying to introduce like some rusting elements using pigments and, and, and stuff like that in certain spots because uh, if I remember correctly, Mr. Nathan's Lark is rusty, but I wasn't sure how well those pigments would seal and if they would like come off on his hands in use or other things. And so I decided against it. Uh, I feel like that really could have added some extra character, but wanted this to be still usable-ish, even though it isn't super uh, powerful. I do wonder though, if um, increasing the spring load back here would actually overcome that kind of friction issue in the barrel. Maybe that's something I should have thought about and tried a while ago, but I'm thinking about it now. Huh. Maybe it's something Mr. Nathan can try. So that's been my experience trying to get a blaster to match the colors of blasters that are matching the colors of someone's personal vehicle. And it was, it was fun. Uh, I hope the result is something worthwhile. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you be a part of this community and uh, see what I get up to next in the future with this hobby and others. So in the comments down below, let me know if you ever tried to match colors with something else that you don't physically have in front of you to match with. Uh, how has it gone for you? Have you been able to uh, figure out any tips or tricks that you think other people would like to know? Let me know down below. And uh, I think that's enough out of me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time.